Hey, what's up guys? So I wanted to make a quick little video going over the items to craft for the cube in season 19. There have been a few different changes with certain builds, so certain things will become more viable, but I wanted to go ahead and go over what are the optimal items to craft to have the highest chance to actually craft some of these weapons that will essentially have multipliers that you can go ahead and start early on. So this is going to be a little quick start guide for weapons that you want to craft. Now recently I just uploaded a video going over the leveling guide from 1 to 70, and I'll pin that down below in the comment section below in case you guys want that full starter guide but this is going to be focusing in on just what to craft out of the cube so you can instantly get a damage multiplier there's really good posts over on reddit which i'll link down below but i kind of want to go ahead and showcase off the items over here so it's a little bit more simplified so you guys can know what you're actually getting and what the multipliers are so first off because barbarian is going to be one of the most popular uh classes to play this season let's go ahead and kick it off with them so first off uh, you're going to be crafting two handed mighty weapons over here and you can get the gavel of judgment which is going to increase the damage of hammer of the ancients and also give you some resource uh regeneration if it hits three or fewer enemies and then we also have fury of the vanished peak you're going to be able to increase the damage and uh, reduce the fury cost of seismic slam by quite a significant amount and on top of that there are also bracers that can actually give you additional buffs with both of these and uh, we covered that in a previous video but to really sum it up over here um, as far as barbarian goes it's definitely one of the best classes this season not only because of its new buffs but also because of the huge start that they have with two bracers that you'll have a chance to get an increased damage with of course both of these new skills if you can get really lucky rng and craft one of these throw this in the cube and then on top of that have the bracers you'll be really set up for a barbarian but i also want to mention just as a heads up uh via using d3 planner which again everything that i'm going to be talking about i'll link down below um it doesn't guarantee that if you craft a two-handed mighty weapon that you will get uh, one of these two items but these are the optimal two items that you can get and the pool over here you guys can see it is only six items so your chances of getting uh one of these are actually quite high but uh, anyways, moving on to Crusader, this could be actually kind of a viable endgame uh, item depending on how high you want to push on the Greater Roofs. But Dark Light uh, actually got a nice little buff over here. This is going to be for the Fist of the Heavens and the damage on this is absolutely insane. So with Crusader, you're going to be wanting to craft legendary one-handed flails. And then you also have the Girl Falcon's Foot. Uh, that's going to increase the damage of Blessed Shield. And it completely removes the resource cost. So again, if you can get this like really early on, it's huge. You also have Johanna's uh, Argument, which can increase the attack speed of Blessed Hammer by 100%. Uh, percent. Also increases the damage. So attack speed and damage, uh, which is quite nice. And then for uh, Demon Hunter, they actually have some of the best options here because... Both options are all multipliers here, so you're going to be crafting one-handed daggers if you're playing Demon Hunter, and that's going to increase the damage of Impale by uh, up to 375%, and also returns Hatred if it hits the same target, but more than likely, that one target's going to melt anyways. And then you also have the Lord uh, Greenstone's Fan, that's going to increase the uh, damage of Fan of Knives, it kind of stacks up, but pretty much you should be able to get like one or two stacks pop it, and you'll basically melt most things. Uh, in the game, especially earlier on. Now, going into Monk, you actually have a lot of options for Monk. There's a lot of things that can roll. Um, you have Incense, uh, Torch of the Grand Temple, which is for the Wave of Light. And then on top of that, you have Balance, which is going to uh, be a very viable endgame cubed item. And it's going to make it so the damage of Tempest Rush is increased by up to 600%. And when it hits three or fewer enemies, it gains 100% crit chance. So that's huge for boss fights. And then also the uh, Flow of Eternity. Uh, this one, it might not be the best, especially earlier on, but nonetheless, you're going to be able to increase the damage of 7 Side Strike by 100% and also reduce the cooldown of it by up to 60%. And then moving on to the Necromancer here. Necromancer is very easy to roll because there's not that many. Um, like I said, it doesn't guarantee that you will be rolling uh, and getting that guaranteed chance. But if we go into Monk and go to, like, uh, for example, the Two-Handed Daibo, there's a lot of other options. But if we go to Necromancer, you really can't go wrong with any of the Two-Handed Scythe. All of them are multipliers over here. So uh, anyways, the Necromancer craft a legendary Two-Handed Scythe. And uh, that's going to make it so Death Nova is going to be getting a multiplier by up to 400%. We have the Petrified Spike that's going to increase the damage of your Bone Spear by up to 700%. And then the Nair's Black Death is going to make it so each 
a different poison skill you use increases the damage of your poison skills by up to 100% for 15 seconds which pretty much means your entire skill ball will all be poisoned and you just go ahead and cycle through activating all of them and then uh, this is technically one of the best ones but uh, it's kind of up to you as far as what you want to utilize because the secondary makes it so every point of maximum essence increases your damage by uh, 0.5% and bone spikes generates an additional two essence for each enemy hit and then uh, moving on to Witch Doctor, we have Wormwood, which is going to make it so Locust Swarm continuously plagues enemies around you. And then we also have the Staff of Cairo, uh, Cairo Terra, um, which is going to increase the damage of Fire Bats, and uh, it's going to have increased damage and attacks faster. And then uh, for Wizard, which is one of the more difficult ones to actually roll some of these items on, uh, but the Wand of Woe is going to increase the damage of Explosive Blast by up to 400%. You also have Unstable Scepter, which can increase the uh, damage of Arcane Orb by up to 450%, and it will actually uh, have a secondary explosion. And on top of that, you have Fragment of Destiny, which increases the Spectral Blade damage by up to 200%. But mostly it's the attack faster because it doesn't cost any resource. Again, this would be excellent for going right into the season over here. And uh, there are other multipliers. They're kind of going to be uh, for Kadala uh, utilizing those blood shards in the very beginning. And I'll link this down below. But for a lot of characters, it might be more optimal to go for the Poxfold. Those are the pants that have the, the gas that goes around, basically the fart pants. Um, those are actually going to be the best in slot for a lot of different classes. Um, for example, like Demon Hunter, you have a uh, bonus with the Hellcat Waste Guard. Uh, but because you don't get grenades until way later on, it's not generally seen as something that will be worth it. Um, but uh, these are items you can gamble with Kudala that also happen to have multipliers. So for Barbarian, you have pretty much the best options. Um, go for the Bracers. You're going to be able to go for the Seismic Slam as well as the Hammer of the Ancients. For Crusader, you happen to have the Guard of Johanna. Uh, that's going to increase your uh, damage of Blessed Hammer. And then for Demon Hunter, I would probably just go with Poxfolds. Those are going to be probably a little bit more optimal. And then for uh, Monk, you have the uh, Dancer's Boots. And then you also have Caesar's Memento, um, although you'll have to have something activate to proc some bonus damage for Tempest Rush. Uh, and then uh, you also have the uh, Pinto Pride Bracer, which makes it so you're going to get a buff for Wave of Light. So you basically have two items that you can potentially get with Monk, and I'd probably go for Bracers on Monk. For uh, Necromancer, um, I would say your best chance is probably just going to be Gloves, um, because gambling for your uh, Blood Shards uh, in trying to get weapons is going to be a lot more cost uh, costly, and I would not recommend it just due to it costing literally triple than uh, the normal uh, items, which usually cost 25. Uh, rings, amulets, and uh, weapons will cost a little bit more. For uh, Wizard, you have the stream of Delzir, uh, which is going to give you an attack speed buff and also gives you some extra uh, regeneration here. And then you have Etch Sigil, which is probably the best option uh, for Wizard, but you don't get to use that till later on. Keep in mind, it does show all the item levels, and if anything is under 16, you can gamble at level 1 and you have a higher chance of getting it. But uh, anyways, there's a quick little starter guide. Like I said yesterday, I dropped a full video on this, the, the 1 through 70 guide, and definitely check that guy, uh, check that guys out. Check that out, guys, if you guys are interested in playing it this season. It'll help you kind of get a huge little lead. But I just wanted to go over the items that you guys can actually craft. It's a really helpful little tip. And again, I'll link everything down below just in case you want to check out what else you can actually craft from certain other classes here. But pretty much these are going to be the more optimal ones and the ones that you want to try to uh, get some luck with the RNG with, the, of course, the cube. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. And if you enjoyed it and if you're new here and would like to see more Diablo as well, as well as other gaming content, hit subscribe, turn on that bell, and you'll definitely see more very soon. But thanks for tuning in. Have a good one. And I'll see you guys in Season 19. And if you guys want to catch me live, I'll be playing it all night over on twitch.tv slash And uh, that will be also pinned down below. But thanks for tuning in. Have a good one. I'm signing out. Peace.